Okay, hello, I am back. Uh, moving on to chapter nine. Um, number one, who were the founders of the Living Theater? What was their most famous production? The Living Theater was founded by Judith Molina, M-A-L-I-N-A, and Julian Beck, B-E-C-K. Um, the focus of uh, the Living Theater was um, political, in a sense, rebellious, extremely rebellious. Um, while the Living Theater actually started a decade or so earlier than the, the, the production of their most famous production, which is Paradise Now, Paradise Now, um, their, their uh, um, uh, growth, their popularity, as limited as it was, really came during the 1960s. Uh, the Civil Rights Movement, the, the Vietnam War, this was a period of um, protest and rebellion, and this theater reflected it. Rebellious theater. I posted a uh, a, 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 a short video on Blackboard of their production. Number two, theater anarchy. This is kind of um, an example. The Living Theater is an example of this type of rebellious theater. Um, during their production of Paradise Now, they smoked marijuana, they were naked, uh, as well as doing things like burning money. Um, uh, they uh, uh, questioned the um, uh, draft, for one thing, uh, but also the need for people to have documentation when they cross uh, the borders of countries. Uh, they, they believed in being a world citizen, being world citizens. So this was um, Rebellious. This was theater anarchy. They conf they confronted audience members, um, and uh, so theater for the purpose of getting a result. Unfortunately for them, this theater, the the living theater, was not popular, not for very long. Um, people didn't recognize it as theater necessarily. So, number three. What is the Polish Laboratory Theater? What book did Jerzy Grotowski write? And what is the poor theater philosophy? Polish Laboratory Theater, obviously a theater in Poland. The leader of, or the founder of the Polish Laboratory Theater was Jerzy Grotowski. And he wrote a book called Towards a Poor Theater. And poor theater is basically the understanding or the belief that theater really exists or needs only a few things. A script, a good play, um, a, uh, a, a group of well-trained actors and basically the clothes on your back and a table and a couple of chairs. This was a movement away from theater that uh, gave us all of the lights and sound and costumes and uh, this type of theater pared it down to the bare minimum. Um, uh, and for this reason, what made it so powerful is that you had performers telling stories through movement and their voices and their, their uh, um, um, action. It was very action-oriented theater. I posted a video of a uh, training session, a short uh, video of um, uh, a training session with a member of the Polish Laboratory Theater and a couple of his students. Very interesting, you should watch. Uh, Postmodernism. 
So consider all of the creative, experimental, abstract, different um, uh, examples that came out during the modernist period of the early 20th century. We are now in a post-modernist period. We've experienced modernism. And post-modernism is basically going back to what we created from that point back and forward and realizing that we can access that, we can use all of it. Um, I think your textbook describes postmodernism as a breaking down of barriers, a melding of categories, mixing of theater media, if you will. Consider creating a, a collage, a piece of work, a collage. What this is, is theater collage, using whatever uh, is available to tell your story. That's the approach of postmodernism, um, mixing things. Number five, who was Lorraine Hansberry? Lorraine Hansberry, African-American playwright, wrote A Raisin in the Sun. That's probably her most popular play. It's most definitely her most popular play. Um, she uh, was not the first uh, um, African-American woman to have a play on Broadway. Actually, Alice Childress was the first African-American woman to have a play on Broadway with her play Trouble in Mind, which right now is uh, running on Broadway with a new production, actually directed by a, an old friend of mine who I went to college with, um, Charles Randolph Wright. However, Lorraine Hansberry, for this test, Lorraine Hansberry wrote A Raisin in the Sun. Number six, who was August Wilson? August Wilson, African-American playwright. Um, August Wilson is famous for his, what is called, uh, 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 a ten-play cycle. Um, August Wilson wrote a play for every decade of the 20th century that um, kind of reflects the African-American experience in the U.S. Um, uh, his plays include titles like you've probably um, heard of Fences, uh, which was made into a movie directed and starred Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. Um, Viola Davis won the Academy Award for that one. And also most recently, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was produced, I think on Netflix, um, last year and was, I believe, the last performance uh, by Chadwick Boseman, who in, if you treat yourself, if you haven't seen this, watch Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Chadwick Boseman is amazing, amazing. Um, but that was August Wilson, the contribution he made of a play for every decade of the 20th century, his 10 play cycle. Number seven, who wrote Dutchman? Dutchman uh, was written by an African-American playwright by the name of Amiri Baraka. Powerful, powerful two-character play. Uh, young African-American man, young African-American woman. The action of the play is set in a subway car. Um, and uh, I will post a video for you to watch, but it is um, for the time that it was written in, in the 1960s, this was powerful um, African-American drama. No excuses. It's uh, very hard-hitting. Uh, um, but I will post the video for your interest. You might even want to write about it. Angels in America, number eight, was written by Tony Kushner. And the issue that Angels in America addresses 
is the AIDS epidemic in this country. I'll be back.